Well, uh, welcome uh, this morning to the new Family Safety Center here in Nashville. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to be here this morning to announce the new Metro policy supporting Metro employees affected by domestic violence and to give a tour of the new uh, Family Safety Center co-located co with the Metro Police Department here on this site. Uh, it's a hub for serving victims and survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, elder abuse, and child abuse. Uh, it's important for me to be here today because it represents this city's commitment to preventing and dealing with domestic violence and interpersonal violence, which are, which are very serious issues here in our community and require all hands on deck to address. Metro is leading the way, not just through the investment at this facility here, the Family Safety Center, but also through issuing an executive order that will support domestic uh, victims of domestic violence um, who work for the Metro government. So today I'm going to be signing Executive Order Number 005, a policy on domestic violence in the workplace. It's a victim-centered and victim-sensitive policy that applies to all unclassified Metro employees. It's a part of our commitment to a healthy and safe workplace and to the prevention and reduction of the incidents uh, and effects of domestic violence. We recognize that these, uh, these incidents of domestic violence, even though they don't occur in the workplace, are, are issues that we need to deal with in the workplace. We know that these incidents cross all kinds of lines, economic, educational, cultural, age, gender, sexual orientation, racial, and religious lines. So the policy will uh, create a so safe and supportive workplace by providing victims with referrals to resources to en enhance safety, empowering supervisors and other appointing authorities to develop responsive procedures including referrals, and reasonable work, workplace safety plans for all employees personally or tangentially affected by incidents of domestic violence. It will provide referrals and or disciplinary action for employees who are perpetrators of domestic violence in accordance with, of course, the applicable civil service rules. It will require training for all employees about recognizing and responding to domestic, to domestic violence. And of course, it will also respect the applicable confidentiality rules that uh, govern government. So I wanna say thank you to Diane Lance, the director of the Mayor's Office of Family Safety, who will be responsible for implementing this policy and providing training to Metro employees, and to the Mayor's Council on Gender Equity and to its co-chairs, co Pat Shea and Rita Johnson-Mills, um, their health, health and safety committee in particular, and to Sarah Beth Myers, who's here with us today, uh, the president of AWAKE. Uh, it's a local community group that worked uh, with uh, the, uh, the Gender Equity Council uh, to help draft this policy. It's based on the work of a group called Futures Without Violence. It's a great example of how advocates have worked with government in the past and will work with us in the future to make progress on the issues that are important to the city. So thank you for being here this morning for the announcement of this, uh, of this incredible new uh, policy that the city is going to adopt. I will say that uh, although uh, the executive order applies to unclassified employees, uh, we'll still need the Civil Service Commission to adopt the, sa the same policy, and we're asking for Metro Schools and all of the other uh, governmental entities to adopt the same policy as well. So I'd like to invite uh, Diane, Pat, and Rita to the podium so that, uh, and Sarah Beth, come on up as well, and we will sign executive order number five. Well, I'll, I'll sign it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we could all sign it together, I guess. <laughs> Thank 
There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. So again, I'd like to challenge the rest of Metro government to adopt the same policy. It's important uh, for uh, government to ref reflect these values. I'd also challenge every private sector employer in town to do the same. It's, uh, it's the way that we can make the biggest impact on preventing incidents of domestic violence in our community and uh, accommodating and, and uh, dealing with the, the consequences of domestic violence in the home. Uh, it's something we're happy to do, and uh, I look forward uh, additionally to um, getting a, a tour of the Family uh, Safety Center here. Yeah, I can tell you that it is also part of the city's long-term commitment to confronting this very serious issue in our town. And I know Diane is going to brag about the facility, so I'd like to ask her to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Mayor Briley. This is just, um, it's been a real honor to work on the Gender Equity Council with Pat and Sarah Beth and Rita. Um, it's a wonderful thing when you can figure out a way to make um, the places where victims work not only safe but supportive because when a victim loses her job, because um, she's a victim of domestic violence and it's interfering with her work, it makes um, him or her only even more vulnerable. So this is a really great thing. Thank you, Mayor Briley. Um, I'm really excited um, about today for you all to have a sneak peek at not only what's an amazing building with a lot of extra care and decision making about what goes on in the building, but you're also going to get a sneak peek about what it will be like to receive services in this building because there's an, a, a robust array of services that are going to be provided to victims of interpersonal violence within these walls. So that's just a wonderful thing. And the, what, we're, what you're going to see is a family justice center, which this is called the Family Safety Center, and it follows a really common sense model for giving services to victims of interpersonal violence. And that common sense model is, why don't we put the services that these victims need all under one roof? Um, makes sense, doesn't it, to have ha, not send victims all over town for the services that they need? Because when you make accessing services easier, for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault and trafficking and elder abuse and child abuse, when you make accessing services easier, they will seek those services out. And that's exactly what we want to have happen in this building. And so it's really an exciting moment to be able to give you all a sneak peek at what we're going to be doing here. And at its most fundamental level, we will be co-locating some really core services to begin with. We have several divisions of the police department that assist those types of victims. We have a um, couple divisions of the district attorney's office that will be co-located here, parts of the Department of Children's Services, the nonprofit, Nashville Children's Alliance, um, my department, um, the Office of Family Safety will be fully co-located here. And then we have nonprofit partners um, that will be starting off on day one with us, such as the Sexual Assault Center, the YWCA, Legal Aid Society, um, Prevent Child Abuse Tennessee, Morning Star Sanctuary, Mary Parish, Catholic Charities, and the list goes on. And the great thing about a family safety center is it's always growing. So when we learn more services that victims need when they come to this building, we go seek those services out. If we find that victims of domestic violence need a support group on Tuesday, Thursday, we go find that nonprofit partner to help provide that. And that's the robust nature of a family safety center. And we're, we're excited for this to start, to open, and begin to grow. Um, so um, I'll just turn this over to Mayor Briley for some Q&A, and then we'll begin our tour. I'm sure there'll be questions for you too, Diane. <laughs> if there are any questions. All right. Right. Well, I'd like for, to get the best information on that. So Diane probably has the, I don't want to say anything that's entirely inaccurate. So Pat or Diane could probably answer that best. 
Well, I mean, of course, the first thing you do is we're going to teach supervisors the most trauma-informed response to that type of disclosure and really work with that victim in a victim-centered way to find out what helps make that person safe. There's not one safety solution for each type of victim. And so it's really teaching the supervisors how to have that conversation in a meaningful and appropriate way and then figure out where to go from there and what type services to direct them to and how to keep them safe at the workplace and then hopefully at home as well. One thing I, one thing I did forget to say uh, was that I wanted to thank Messer Construction and Hastings Architecture and uh, TM Partners for their work on the building. They'll get another chance to be acknowledged when we have the final ribbon cutting, but uh, as you see, uh, you'll see once you get into the space, it is, um, it's a, it's a it's a great building, and um, it's also um, uh, I think you'll see when I think think we'll be able to see the solar panels that are upstairs as well that that partially power the building. So, all right. Well, thank you.